Responsive search ads are the newest ad unit available for search advertisers. And if recent actions are any indicator, they're gonna be prioritized over the standard text ads. Recently, Google has kind of hid the ability to create standard text ads and only really shows you how to create responsive search ads in some accounts. So it's really important to make sure that we understand how responsive search ads work and put together good units to see good performance out of them. So today what I wanna do is give a run through of the differences between responsive search ads and standard text ads, give you some tips on how to customize your responsive search ads, and lastly close out by looking at the performance data you can see for them, limited or not, and how you can use that to get better performance out of your ads. So the first thing I wanna do in the Google Ads interface is show you that in some accounts, the option to create a text ad is being hidden, and Google prompts you to only create a responsive search ad. In this first account, we still have the option to create a text ad. If I click on the blue plus create ad button, you can see that we still have text ad, responsive search ad, call ad, ad variation, all this stuff. We can still create the text ad right from here. But if I hop into a second account, you can see that when I click the blue plus button to create a new ad, I only have responsive search ad, call ad, and ad variation added here. And there's this big blue box that pops up that asks if I'm looking to create a text ad. This is where Google will explain to you that you can still switch back to text ads, but they are trying to push people into responsive search ads to start. So let me show you what it looks like if you wanna switch back to a text ad. You start off and you click responsive search ad. Then once you're in the ad builder, We've got a bunch of different things that obviously this is quite a bit expanded compared to text ads. We'll go through this in a second. But up here in the top box, you can see switch back to text ads. And this is how we would go back and use a standard text ad instead of a responsive search ad. When you click that, it's going to double check and make sure that this is what you wanna do. So let's click yes, switch. And now you'll see the standard text ad creation process that we've become accustomed to with the headline one, two, three, and descriptions one and two, and the ad preview off to the right. But since this video is about responsive text ads, let's hop back into that builder and I'll walk you through some of the nuances and differences between the standard text ads and responsive search ads. Back in this updated, much larger ad creation process, there are a few differences between responsive search ads and text ads that I wanna talk about. The first is that you can tell that there are quite a number of fields for headlines. And even on top of that, there's a button down here that says add headline. For responsive search ads, you can add up to 15 different headlines in each ad unit, and then Google will dynamically choose which ones of those will be populated in your ad. You can still only show three at a time and what order or placement they will show up in. So what this is trying to do is make your ad responsive based on what the user's search query was, what the other behind the scenes metrics are that Google knows about them that we don't. And Google's going to try to show them the most relevant option of headlines out of those that you've provided here. We can also add up to four different descriptions onto each of our different ad units. So between each of these, you've got 15 headlines and four descriptions that could possibly intermix and mingle to create all sorts of different ad previews and ad variants for the user to see. So to try and get you a view of what different ads could look like, I'm gonna go ahead and populate this with a number of different headlines and a couple descriptions. And then we're gonna run through the ad preview and you can see how these are potentially going to show up in a number of different placements. Okay, so now I have some placeholder headlines and descriptions in here. And in the preview off to the right, you can see that they are populating a number of different views here. And to be quite honest, this is a little bit different view than what I'm used to. It's actually showing full previews of what your ad could look like. It might not always look exactly like this for you, but as you watch this rotate through a number of different variants, you can see that the text is not always showing up in the same spot, especially in the headlines place. Right now we see paid media pros in headline three, but once the ad refreshes, now it's in headline two and we put it in the headline one space over in the actual ad builder. Now it's not even showing up in this variant. This is effectively what responsive search ads do. They take all of the different variables that you give them for headlines and descriptions and mix and match and put them in any order combination that it thinks is going to get the best performance out of that individual user based on what Google knows about them. 
So that gives you a good overview of what responsive search ads do and how the variables that you put in the headlines and descriptions could potentially show up in your ad copy. But now let's start to look through some ways that you can customize these a little bit because there are some tools you can use to make sure that certain things show up in different places or that your ads will at least try and make sense no matter what order they show up in. That's one of the biggest challenges for responsive search ads is making sure that whatever headlines or descriptions you write, whatever order Google decides to show them in, they need to still make logical sense if somebody is reading them from start to finish. That's probably the biggest challenge. And one of the best things that Google lets us do is pin headlines and descriptions into certain spots. So let's take a look at that. If we come over in the headlines area and I hover over this first field where we have paid media pros, you can see that this tiny little push pin and question mark icon showed up on the right. What this does is allows us to pin your headlines or descriptions into a certain placement so that they will only show up there if Google decides to show them. So if you think that in this instance, paid media pros should only show up in position one, you can click on this push pin here and then you can tell Google to only show this in position one if it is going to be shown. Now you can see the little push pin here is blue and it stays there whether I've hovered over it or not. And and there's a one next to it. So let's say that we also want to customize a little bit further. And we say that the second headline here, weekly PPC videos, maybe we also want this to show up only in position one, if it shows up, you can pin multiple different headlines into position one. It just means that these will never show up next to each other because they've been pinned. So they're only eligible for position one and you can't have two headline ones at the same time. Remember that when you start to pin these and you're making a little bit more customization here, to ensure that your ads read the way you want them to from start to finish, you might end up putting a number of headlines in position one. And that just means that they are going to only be able to jockey for position in that one spot and they're not gonna show up anywhere else. So if you have something that is a high value piece that you wanna make sure only shows up there, maybe keep the number of headlines that you've pinned to two or three, or maybe even one if you wanna make sure that that's the only one that shows there. Like I said, you can do the same thing for your description. So if we hover down here, you can decide to pin a certain description either to description one or description two. The biggest thing to keep in mind for the description two, as well as headline three, is that those are still optional. Google will not show those every single time. So if there is a certain message that you wanna make sure always shows up or some sort of call to action you wanna have included, ideally you would put that in either a headline one, headline two or description one placement to make sure that you have the highest chance of having that included in your ad variant as much as possible. The last thing I wanna look at on this screen is this ad strength box up here in the upper right. And this is a relatively new feature that Google's put together to try and help users get more accustomed to responsive search ads to try and get better performance out of them. Remember, it's in Google's best interest for you to put together very strong responsive search ads because if you see good performance with them, you'll likely keep using them, which will probably move you away from standard text ads a little bit more. And that seems to be the direction they wanna go in the first place. This is a very much a self-serving piece that also can benefit you to hopefully have better performing responsive search ads than maybe you would have come up with on your own. But just like any other Google recommended strategy, don't just blindly adopt whatever they tell you to use here because some of these suggestions, like we'll see here in just a second, are quite frankly just not great and they might not make the most sense. So always take these with a grain of salt and make sure that you're putting whatever you think is actually going to have better performance in your ads, not just taking whatever advice Google gives you. Each one of these different pieces here, you can see that the first thing is that my responsive search ad has a ad strength of poor, which it's a little bit rude. I think it's fine, honestly, it's not great, but it's fine. But there are a few things that Google thinks we can do to improve it. First thing, it says add more headlines. And you can see that we've got about a half green circle here, but they also give you some ideas. So if you click on view ideas, it opens up these headline suggestions that we have in here. These first two options of either YouTube or paid media pros dash YouTube. Those are two specific options that if you simply click on one, it directly applies it into your headlines variant. And now it's eligible to show up as part of your responsive search ad. The paid media pros dash YouTube option, 
that's not bad. That one's okay. I might want to keep that one, but also I might pin it to the same location that I've pinned the paid media pros headline, because if these two show up next to each other, it's redundant and that's not valuable. So maybe I would want to pin this one into headline one so that they'll basically compete against each other and only one of them will show at a time to make sure that my ad isn't showing duplicate information. But just like I said earlier, not every suggestion Google gives you is good. A headline of just YouTube by itself, that's a terrible headline. It's amazing that that's what they suggested, even though they already think that my ad strength is poor, but whatever, I'm not the one to judge. But down below the auto suggested headlines, which sometimes you'll have a bunch, sometimes you'll only have a couple, in other instances you'll have none. I'll show you some other examples where we don't have any more. They do give you some template examples down here. So if you're trying to advertise a product or service, you can put together some headlines that maybe follow this sort of template that they have. If you're talking about shipping and returns, you can put together something that talks about scheduled pickups, curbside order pickup, extended 30 day returns policy. If you wanna put in some sort of call to action, they give you some examples about book your hotel, schedule a test drive, sign up today. There are a lot of different sort of templates that they put together for suggestions to try to get you to think about your business in relation to these templates and see what types of new headlines you can come up with. If you're struggling for some headlines and you want to put together more variants to try and get your ad strength up, take a look at these templates and see if any of them apply to your business. But for now, let's keep moving down the other suggestions that Google has. So the second option here says include popular keywords in your headline. Let's go ahead and click view ideas. And when you do that, you can see that Google still suggests the YouTube headline. And quite frankly, they don't have any other suggestions. And I don't think that's a great headline by itself. So I'm not going to add it. But ideally, they would come up with some different examples that you could use for your account. All of the templates down below, product or services, benefits, brand, all of that is the same that was in the first section. So I'm not going to go through that again. They do have this additional option down here of make your headlines more unique. So let's see if they have any more ideas here. And all of this ends up showing the same stuff. But clearly the fact that there are three suggestions for adding more headlines, using popular keywords in your headlines, and making your headlines more unique tells you that the headline is a very important portion of your responsive search ads, and quite frankly, just an important portion of text ads in general on the Google search engine results pages. So make sure that you're putting your best foot forward in headlines headlines because those are really going to stand out. There are some tips that Google will also give you to make your descriptions more unique. Obviously it thinks that mine are at least half not unique. Let's see if they have any ideas here. Unfortunately, they don't. There are no suggestions for any of our descriptions, so we're left to our own devices. There are a few tips in this link to create effective responsive search ads, so you can go check that out yourself. But at this point, we apparently just need to get a little bit more unique with these descriptions and see if we can help them stand out a little bit more. Once you've finished putting all of the text fields in place, you can come down here and still add any of your URL options that you want before you create the ad. But once you're done, just click save ad and it's all set. Once you save your responsive search ad, it'll show up like this in the Google Ads interface. So it'll still show the different headlines that we have in here, but it'll show them in the order that we saved them. So you can still see paid media pros as headline one, weekly PPC videos as headline two, then like and subscribe today as headline three, but then it says plus four more. We'll still see the two descriptions that are there as well. But the thing that's a little bit different is you can see here that there is a view asset details button. So let's click on that. And this is how you would see all of the different variables that you have within this responsive ad unit. You'll notice that there is only one column over here for performance, and that is for impressions. You will only be able to see the number of impressions that have been attributed to each of the headlines and each of the descriptions and any other sort of insight into performance. You'll only be able to see in a learning, good, best, or poor type of evaluation. You're just not going to be able to see a lot. The only type of performance we'll see outside of impressions is if we go back to the complete responsive ad unit in the interface. So looking back at that, you can see here that we've got the regular ad unit and we would have clicks, impressions, click through rate, conversions, all of the different performance metrics here. But those metrics outside of impressions will only be shown for this entire ad unit as a whole. You won't get to see which headline is driving conversions, which description is driving conversions. They're just not going to show you that. So it's all going to come down to impressions to show you kind of what performance will look like in any of the different views. Let's actually hop into an account that has some performance so you can see what it'll look like. 
So here we're in an account. Sorry, I have all the assets blurred out, but you can still get what's going on. The asset type here will show you if it's a headline or a description. It'll show if there's any position pinning, which on this one, we're kind of letting it run free. There's no specific placements there, but it is a good helpful referral piece if something is pinned into headline one or headline two, or if two different headlines are pinned in position one, you can see if one is getting more or less impressions than the other and kind of how they're competing. But the only performance indicators we're gonna get are in this performance column. And it really is just looking at learning, pending, good, best, and some will show up as poor. Those types of words and guidance are the only indicators Google is going to give you as to how each of these pieces are performing. If you hover over each of them, it will give you a little bit of a rundown of what that means, but it's also not very descriptive. This asset is performing well relative to other assets of this type. Great. Super helpful. Thank you so much for that deep, deep wisdom, Google. Just keep in mind that you're not really going to get to see any further insights into performance for these individual pieces. It might even be something where you want to start to bucket different types of messaging in different responsive ad units to see if one focusing on features while another focuses on benefits, while another focuses on testimonials, something like that, that responsive search ads as a unit, see how they perform because you'll actually be able to see conversion, cost per conversion, any revenue numbers tied to those at that ad unit level. The only other insights into the performance of responsive search ads you'll get, and it's still only impression-based, are going to be up here in combinations. Here you can see the different variants of your ads that have shown up and the number of impressions that each one of them have got. I apologize that all of these are blurred out, but you don't need to see the actual information. But each of these different white boxes here shows you a different ad unit that showed based on the assets that were available in this responsive search ad. The first box up here in the top left has two headlines and two descriptions. The one just to its right has two headlines and one description. And each of the ones after that have some different combination of headlines, descriptions. Sometimes they show more text, sometimes they show less. But if you're worried about what your ads are actually looking like and how your ads are being put together and what your potential customers are seeing, you can come in here and see the different combinations that are being shown and the number of impressions that each one of them are getting and try to make any customizations by either adjusting some text, maybe pinning some text in different spots or just removing it all together if it doesn't create a good flow from start to finish in each of your different ad units. Thanks for watching our video. If you thought it was useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week. So if you want to get notified of when a new one comes out, be sure to subscribe to the Paid Media Pros channel.